Hello there. Let me tell you more about .NET Managed Stacks. In my previous video, I showed how to view a native stack in Windybug. Let me expand on that with a video on how to view a managed stack in Windybug. Let me switch real quick to Windybug. Let's start by opening a .NET memory dump. There's nothing special about this memory dump. All I did was take a memory dump from a .NET application. Once Windybug has started, load the SOS plugin. The SOS plugin is a Windybug plugin that is used to decode the .NET memory dump. There are a few locations in which the SOS plugin could be located on the hard disk. The simplest technique to load the SOS plugin is to use the load by command. How to use the load by command is to type load by SOS CLR. What that does is that it looks for the location of where the CLR is on the hard disk and it loads the SOS plugin from the same location as the CLR. We can view the location of the uh, SOS plugin by running the uh, chain command. That shows us that the SOS plugin loaded from the Microsoft.NET Framework v4.0 uh, folder. What we want to do is we always want to load the SOS plugin from the same location as where the CLR is. If I type LMVM CLR, I will get the location of where the CLR is loaded. And let me get it there. Uh, the image path of the CLR, that's the location where the CLR is loaded from. And we always want to load the SOS from the same location. The version of the SOS must match the version of the CLR. If the SOS does not match the CLR, it actually won't load. When you type load by SOS CLR, you'll get an error. I will cover that error in a future video. The next plugin I'm going to use is the SOSEX plugin. So how I load it is I just go load SOSEX. You can get this plugin from this URL in the description below. What this plugin is, is just a set of commands that are kind of like an extension to the SOS. It's, it's a very useful plugin. You don't need it all the time, but I like to use this plugin because I think the output of this plugin is really good. So I will use the commands in the SOS and also in the SOSEX. Try to get the plugin from the website, but if you really can't get it, just use the SOS commands. You can view the stack and do all the commands with just SOS, but I feel that SOS EX kind of looks nicer in the output. When you type .load, the plugin SOS EX will actually load from the same folder as Windybug. Now, alternatively, if you don't want to load the plugin from the same folder, you can use this variable anti-debugger extension path and that variable will tell Windybug that you want to load the plugin from a different location. Now, um, before we start, just a reminder that when you load plugins in Windybug, the plugins have to match the bit type of the memory dump. In my memory dump, I'm taking a 32-bit memory dump. So all the plugins that I'm loading are the 32-bit version. If you have a 64-bit memory dump, definitely load the 64-bit version of all the plugins. Now, also, in order to debug .NET memory dumps, you need to have the symbols loaded. So ensure that the symbol path to the Microsoft Symbol Server is set because you need to download symbols, especially for the CLR itself. You don't really need symbols for the memory dump code because .NET can actually decode enough of the memory dump without actual symbols, but you definitely need the symbols to the Microsoft Symbol Server. Let's start by clearing the screen with uh, CLS and switching to thread zero. Now, there's no real reason for me to switch to thread zero, but I kind of know that thread zero is gonna show a stack. You can use uh, more sophisticated commands to try to search for the stack, but I want to keep things simple. So I'm just going to switch to thread zero when I want to show the stack. First, a short primer on .NET stacks. 
.NET methods are compiled at runtime. When you write code in C Sharp and compile it, it actually becomes an intermediate language called MSIL, Microsoft Intermediate Language. When a .NET method is executed, it is compiled into native code. However, the .NET stack uses a separate memory address for each stack which is separated from the native stack. This makes it a bit more complicated to read a .NET stack because when you run the command to read a .NET stack, you can read the .NET part of the stack, the native part of the stack, or you can read both at the same time. It's a bit confusing because the .NET stack actually uses a different memory address than the native stack. How this is achieved is that every time the native function calls a .NET function, the stack pointer is manipulated. The address of the stack pointer is moved between the .NET portion of the stack and the native portion of the stack. Actually, both parts are separate memory addresses. The .NET part of the stack is allocated by the garbage collector, but the native part of the stack is the original stack that was created by the thread. Now, I am uh, I'm severely oversimplifying how a stack works, but just to get the gist of it, there is a native part and there is a .NET part. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna dump the .NET part, which is the manage stack using the CLR stack command. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run pipe CLR stack. So this command only shows the .NET side or the managed side of the stack. And whenever there is a native site, it's just going to say GC frame is native. So let's do that. There we are. Okay. What we can see here is that the program was running. This is the main of the program. And what's below it is the native stack. So it's just going to say GC frame with an address. Whenever you see this, this means that it is the native stack below it. And the command CLR stack will not show you what is the native stack. So according to this, the main function called some class do something which called some class to method two and the top of the frame is just a helper just just ignore the top of the frame and this is the native portion of the stack there are three frames over here if you would like to see the native part of the stack then you have to use a different command which is dump stack what dump stack does is that it walks the entire stack from the top to the bottom but whenever it finds one of those GC frames it will actually switch contacts from the manage to the native part of the stack and it will continue dumping from there. So if I run dump stack I get a stack that looks a lot longer. What's happening is that it is writing out all the native part and the .NET part and whenever it finds a .NET part it will put the uh, descriptor in the front to indicate that this is a .NET part but whenever it comes to a native part it will just write the stack as though it is the standard WinDebug K. So if I look at the bottom of the stack I will see that the bottom of the stack starts with RTL user thread start. That is exactly how a native thread uh, begins. If I look at the memory address of the stack I will see something uh, a bit interesting which is that when the memory address goes up at a certain point, it goes from 7452, it jumps. This jump over here is because native methods and .NET methods are actually stored in separate locations in memory. That's why you get this big jump because what's happening is that the written address of these functions are in a native DLL, but the written address of these functions are compiled at runtime. Now, Using dump stack is, uh, is fine, but I prefer to use a different command, which is uh, mk. The SOSEX uh, plugin has got this command called mk. I feel it looks a bit nicer. It is, it is a dump stack. It's doing the same thing as a dump stack. But the difference between mk and dump stack is that the output is formatted so that it kind of looks like it fits together. And the uh, parameters are also written a bit nicer. I feel that this output is is easier to read. So generally, I use MK instead of dump stack, but you can use uh, MK or dump stack, which, whichever works for you, um, just go with it. Now, 
One of the good things about MK is that it actually shows you that you have an unmanaged frame, but it also shows you that there is a managed frame. If I click on one of the managed frames, what will happen is that the frame will actually switch to that frame. So M frame switches to that stack frame. Now, once the frame has switched, I can run MDV. What MDV does is that it dumps out the local variables which are located on that frame. In this case, the local variable is uh, the this pointer. If I click on the this pointer over here, it will actually run MDT, which is the command to view objects. So MDT means uh, manage data type. If you give it a memory address, it will actually dump out the object that is location located at that location. The MDV and MDT commands um, belong to the uh, SOSEX. If you don't have those commands, like for example, if you don't have the MDT, you can use the version in the uh, SOS, which is DO, which means uh, dump object. The output of DO looks uh, a whole lot more verbose. So I prefer to use uh, MDT, same, same reasons as the MK. I feel that the SOSEX uh, plugin has a much nicer formatted output. Also, if I click on the uh, hyperlink over here, it will actually run uh, MDT on the next variable. In this case, um, console app one, some class two has two local variables. It will write the output of the variables in the same line. If I run DO, um, the output is very verbose. Um, it's the same. It's the same output, but the difference is that there's just a, a lot more to read, and I feel that it clutters the screen a lot more. .NET only stores variables on the stack if they are native variables, basically numbers, integers, floats, things like that. If it is a reference type, it is always stored on a heap, where the pointer to the reference type is stored on the stack. This means we can actually ask uh, Windybug to just dump every object that it finds on the stack. What we do is we run a command called dump stack objects DSO. When we run DSO, what it does is it goes from the top of the stack to the bottom of the stack. And every time it finds a memory address to a reference type, it will write that reference type out. This is a quick way to look at all the local variables on each stack frame without actually going to each stack frame because you can just do DSO and you just write out everything. Now, with the output of DSO, let me just click on one of these objects over here. What will happen is it will do dump object uh, slash D with the memory address. I feel that this is way too verbose. So what I can do is I can do MDT with the uh, memory address. And I'll get the same output as I did earlier, where MDT will dump the same thing as dump object, but it formats it really well. I can also view this object using um, GC root, which tells me how this object is um, being referenced by other objects and whether the object is alive and referenced by the garbage collector. Now, if I scroll back up to uh, DSO, Another thing you'll see is that uh, you'll see duplicates. Um, these objects are duplicates. Um, they are not actually duplicates uh, on the stack. What's happening is that the WinDebug output does not filter if a duplicate memory address is found on more than one frame. So what happens is that because these addresses are the same, WinDebug just writes the class out twice. Um, it's, it's not a big deal. That's exactly how WinDebug works. And with that, I think um, you have enough to view stacks in .NET. Stacks in .NET may initially seem a bit more complicated than native code, but actually the reality is that it's easier to read because the commands are, they're pretty much less commands. You just need to run MK, uh, CLR stack or dump stack to view the stack. And if you want to view the objects, then it's pretty much MDT, MDV or using DSO to see the uh, list of objects. This video is probably getting a bit too long. So um, I think I'll just leave it at that. Um, a quick short way of how to view uh, .NET stacks. There probably is more complicated techniques, but I wanted to show the simplest way to do it uh, with just the least number of commands. You can use all the commands that I just 
gaff in the form of breakpoints. You can put breakpoints to dump out individual parts of the stack. Like for example, you can put MK in a breakpoint so that if you want to get a breakpoint that um, shows you MK immediately, you, you can do that. All the commands work with breakpoints, they all work with trace points, and you can script them as much as you like. Doing that is a bit more sophisticated, so I kind of um, skip that in this video. But I'll make a video in future with um, like a combination of different techniques in order to, to debug uh, using breakpoints really well. And with that, I think uh, I'll, I'll probably just end it here. A gentle reminder to subscribe and hit that bell icon. Uh, it does help the channel grow and it lets me know what kind of content to produce next. It's been a pleasure to present this information. I am High Voice, signing out.